a British general electrical socket for use outdoors, so completely sealing against a water ingress. It's quite clever. Uh, this is also quite dark. I don't know how this is going to go. It's one of these things that the video has its exposure locked to stop the intensity wavering up and down. So the dark cover sometimes skews with that. But the idea is, you pop open the catches in the front and you hinge the front cover up and it reveals a lovely double gang socket inside. And when you plug a plug into that, let me just grab a plug here. There are rubber seals, not just around the outside here, but at the bottom, it's quite an ingenious system. They've got a large entrance, medium entrance, and then fully closed. So it kind of adapts to whatever size it is. And when this cable gets laid in there into the middle, and this gets closed down, it has the matching uh, sort of adjustable grommet on the other side. When it's hinged down and then locked, it makes a good tight seal. And the idea here is that uh, if you look at the rest of the construction of it, it's not just sealed, but it's also got this thick lip, which is, if water gets in, it's going to shed it around the outside and basically allow it to drain off without getting in. So it seems quite nicely designed, but one of the things that really struck me as interesting is the fact that this double gang socket in here, if I lift it off its, off its base box here, is in fact just an ordinary double gang socket which they've clamped in place with four screws. That is very clever. It means that they didn't have to design a custom plate just for it. And uh, it means that they don't have to go through the sort of regulations of, you know, getting new stuff certified um, specifically for this application. I would open this, but unfortunately they've got the metal rivet going over the back and strip and I do kind of want this socket. Uh, but I shall open another socket at some point and show you the inside of the, the typical British socket. I mean, there's not a lot to see. It's got the switch, it's got the contacts, it's got the earthing and the shutters. The shutters are always an important feature. Um, as with most British sockets, uh, you've got the little shutters here that stop kids poking things in. You can also buy uh, safety things that cover everything like this and uh, in reality the safety things are not needed if you, you've got those safety covers that are kid proof they're really not needed it's hard to get stuff into these holes if particularly if you're a kid well then again some kids can get stuff into the holes um, the shutters are lowered by a little sliding ramp in here and when that's uh, pressed in you can see the shutters opening to allow the plug to go in the plug is the classic British plug that Ebdy says, oh, your plug is so ugly. And you know what? You're absolutely right. It is ugly, but it's very, very functional. It's rated 13 amps and handles that absolutely fine. It's got the big brass earth pin. It's got the sleeved plastic pin so you can't put your fingers round and, try, you know, a kid can't get his fingers round and get a shock while putting the plug in. The earth, the longer earth pin makes connection first and then it opens those shutters so that the, those connections can go, in, can go in. And because of the design of it, uh, the sleeve bit uh, doesn't get in the way of making the connection. The connection is made once the plug's fully in and it gets to the end of these connections. It also has the facility for a fuse inside, a HRC, high rupture capacity fuse. Um, I don't know if they specifically say it's that, but it does handle quite significant fault currents. It's got the uh, silica sand fill in it, and it's rated typically, the highest value fuse would be 13 amp, then you've got the, some suppliers do 5 and 10 and 1 amp fuses, but the classics are 13 amp and 3 amp, colour-coded brown for 13 amp and red for 3 amp. This clear plug is one that's designed not just for style, it's designed so you can actually check the state of the wiring inside, you can see if anything's starting to burn up or if wires have popped out, it's just a sort of electrical safety thing, but I like these plugs, they're very sensibly designed. I notice these have also got LEDs in them, which is a bit of a flippant thing, I suppose it tells you if something's tripped or not. Um, when you mount this onto the back box here, you've got the four sort of are they self tap No, they're not. It's actually got little brass inserts. That's good. They've got the four inserts that when this goes on, it will seal with another seal in here. It's pressed into this uh, recess. And it's got these sort of guides that will guide that in. And then it's got a lip here that presses against that seal to make it watertight. 
And once you've uh, put these screws in, you've also got little grey caps that cover the, the screw holes in the front. The back box has lots of cable entry points. It's very well equipped. Hmm. And these little covers, do these, uh, oh, they just pop off like this sort of friction fit, are they? Or have I just completely screwed that up? Is that going to go back in? No, it's going to go in, okay. Uh, this means you can bring cables in from multiple directions. It's got a brass earthing terminal here if you want to actually pre-terminate uh, the earths in here and then bring a flying earth onto the front. Um, things worthy of note. The... It's got the back knockout, and I'm guessing that in most instances people will generally, if they were mounting a socket outside their house, they'd pass cables through a wall, bring them through this, and this is where it doesn't mention anywhere in the instructions. But this is where a lot of people will tend to use silicon, unfortunately, the standard acid curing, the stuff that smells like vinegar while it's curing. Um, and if they do that, if they gum round that with silicon, as a lot of people do, and then they immediately sort of connect the wires, uh, blob in a bit more silicon, and then put this cover on. Then a significant problem with electrical equipment that's completely sealed like this is that uh, the acid liberated as the silicon cures can attack some metal contacts. I wonder if that ever gives them problems. I wonder if they have failures that are down to that. The unit also has drainage hole facilities. It's got these little channels here that are basic little recesses in the back that you drill a hole and it stops direct entry of water. But it's got one at the top and one at the bottom. Um, and it makes a special point of saying don't drill both. And I think the main thing to note is that you shouldn't drill the one at the top because that's just going to channel water into the box. Um, it should only be the one at the bottom um, of the box. And I guess the reason they've got two is maybe in case somehow you end up turning it over, putting it on upside down, which would still be fine, because the box would still fit on it, because it's uh, symmetrical. But it would just uh, mean that that uh, drainage hole, yeah, it fits on that way as well. That drainage hole would be at the wrong side, so always at the bottom. And I do recommend the use of the drainage holes. In the instructions, they specify that for side entry cables and back entry cables, and I'm guessing top, I'm not a huge fan of top entry uh, of cables or even conduit into stuff like this because gravity will always take the water and it will always find a way in. I always recommend wherever possible cables are brought in from the back or the bottom of the box uh, to protect against, you know, because then it will basically, gravity will stop the water getting in. But the drainage hole is, is always a great idea. Um, I've opened a lot of electrical panels in the past outdoors that have been filled to the brim uh, with water. One particular one in George Square, it was the street lighting box. And uh, they'd done a really great job with the installation in the sense that it was completely watertight and the, uh, the flood lighting in that area wasn't working. I opened it and it just, as soon as I loosened it off, the box just burst open and it was this stagnant water just poured out everywhere. So that's what they're trying to avoid. One thing they mention is that if you do have the bottom entry conduit, then the drainage hole should be drilled at the lowest point of the conduit instead. Um, I guess ultimately there's a risk that that conduit is going to fill up to the brim with water. Otherwise, and that's the main reason they suggest doing that. But having a place for the water to get out, uh, they say a five millimeter hole, that's probably to help with the, if you drill too small a hole, there's that, there's that balance, you know, if you draw, you want to drill a small hole to stop bugs getting in, but bugs will get in anyway, you know, it, just whatever hole you make, a bug of the correct size will find its way in. But uh, you can also go too small to the point that it blocks up easily, surface tension, holds a droplet of water there, goo builds up around it. So they seem to recommend a 5mm hole, which is pretty much what this is here. The channel is, and that will, with the thermal expansion of the ambient temperature during the day and night, that will pump any water that gets in back out through that uh, port. This seems quite nicely designed. Um, other things worthy of mention. Comes with comprehensive instructions with lots of warnings about who can and who can't do electrical work. Noting one bit in particular. Changes to building regulations. Important. 
As from 1st January 2005, any electrical work done in domestic fixed wiring installations in England and Wales, I wasn't aware that Wales got involved in this. I thought Ireland, it was England, Ireland was the main countries, but I could be wrong. We'll have to follow new rules and changes to the building regulations part P, part we, which has become a swear word in the electrical industry. These rules have been introduced to help reduce the number of deaths, injuries and fires caused by faulty installations, which is a bit unfortunate because the number of electrical fires has apparently increased significantly since that date. Um, that could be down to the increased use of electrical appliances, more and more, more electronic appliances, or it could be down to the fact that the industry has been somewhat de-skilled in a huge financial scam. You'll notice that Scotland's missing off this. Uh, the organisation that pushed for this saw a golden opportunity when the European thing came in and they changed the colour code of our wiring. It's, that's another thing that's just unbelievably bad. They changed from a really clear, brilliant, brightly coloured spread across the spectrum colour code of red at one end of the spectrum, yellow in the middle and blue at the other end for the phases. They changed to three shades of, of brown, basically. Brown, black and grey, dull colours. And in doing so, they also swapped a neutral and a phase colour, which is just like, how, who even approved something like that? Uh, I could rant about that. I'll try not to rant about that. Uh, I'm, I'm very practical in my approach to electrical stuff. And it, uh, I find it annoying. Here in the Isle of Man, we are covered by that part piece scam, which means that theoretically, people like me with 38 years in the industry are not allowed to do work in our own home unless it gets approved by somebody else. And that person, well, due to the nature of the industry, could have been put through a slideshow presentation. That, seriously, the de-skilling has been staggering uh, in that organisation. But you'll be glad to know if you live in Scotland that that does not apply to you because um, the Scottish government told that organisation to ram its protection racket up its arse. And the main requirement in Scotland for doing electrical work in your own home is that it's done in compliance with the electrical regulations, which seems quite a common sense thing to do. Oh, this has turned into a rant. Uh, yes, anyway, that big scam that, you know, all the instruction leaflets come warning you that you're not allowed to do work in your own house anymore and you have to use certain organisations who charge a lot of money for approving people. Yeah, oh, I could just rant. I could make an entire video just ranting about that. But um, anyway, getting back to the nice things and ending it on a nice note, this is quite nicely designed. It is designed to shed water always possible. So, that, you know, even though the standard British plug is most certainly not suitable for use outdoors on its own, once it's in here, um, this does seem to provide good clamping and... Water seals, probably still allowing, though, egress of water if it gets in. I'm guessing that seal's got just enough give that uh, if pressure's building up inside, and pressure always cycles up and down, that it's always going to expel water out of this. So it's it's quite well designed. It's quite nice. I like the uh, catch system as well. Once you get used to how it works, uh, it's quite logical. It's a bit fumbly at first, and I think it benefits from pushing on the front a little bit as you do it, just to actually let that unhook, because that is just basically a couple of catches unhooking at the back. But there we go. Uh, thoughts on Part P shenanigans and British plugs and uh, electrical stuff and great desires to subscribe to the channel down below in the comments, please. But yeah, a British general, generic brand in the UK, but a British general waterproof socket that uses a standard socket inside quite a robust and well-designed case. Very neat.